You are listening to another Third Coast Nerds podcast. If you add a weave to your avatar, are you interweaving on the interwebs? Wow. Mm. Kyle enjoys that one. Yeah, I like that one too. <laughs> yeah, as uh, as Kyle came up with it. Yeah. I that remember that fun. conversation now, and I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> we, I like, uh, I like the fact that with the intros, even the ones that you came up with, it still surprises you. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I have a bad memory, so <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm thinking, did I just give Chad the inspiration, or was that me? That's, <laughs> and then you usually say, and I'm like, ah, it was me. Oh, nice. the, the ones that are inspired by you are way more off the wall than that. <laughs> the ones that I take like three words that you post in Hangouts and run with them, those are the ones that usually take like 30 seconds to go through. Yeah, okay. So yeah, we need to get Robert to get a couple of them for us. That'd be fun. I've, I've, yeah, we just next time he's here, I'll record some. Well, he, yeah. he or he could just, just text them. No, to I, I, I want him to do it in the girl voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll slow it down, computerize it. It'll be like uh, the Songify hmm. auto tune. Oh yeah, if we can, yeah, we can auto tune Robert. That'll be interesting. The waving and shout at he. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we haven't played with auto tune yet. We we can increase our production value. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with yeah. Auto-tune. Well, I mean, we shouldn't. It depends on how we increase our production value because you know, as we take steps to do this, um, the man keeps trying to shut our show down. <laughs> <laughs> um, hashtag fuck Lionsgate. Um, <laughs> yeah. So hopefully this episode goes on YouTube the same time I'm able to get episode 28 up because as soon as it was uploaded, it was flagged for the trailer for Fido. Oh, ouch. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like the so way he looks it, at Mike. you when he says that. It's <laughs> not to cast blame, but this is a subtle reminder. You brought that up. Yeah. How dare <laughs> how, how dare our, our, our measly little show talk about a 10-year-old movie that no one cares about? It, it probably got a download or a view because of us. Yeah, and hopefully, well, it, it hopefully, it, hopefully it whoever down. downloaded it torrented it. So, yeah. yeah, keep the... Did you put a banner up? Fight the man. Um, I'm in the process of trying to edit out that section of of the show. Yeah. But every time I do, um, it crashes the editing program. Uh, so the powers that be really want that. <laughs> right. Really want do you to know about Do they care about, about the video movie. or the audio? Um, we didn't have the video on there, did it? It did. Yeah, yeah no, we well, did have video. Yeah, we did have video. Um, so it's an automated process. Yeah. Basically, their algorithm screens all the videos as it's going through processing and goes, hey, these frames match this copyrighted content. It's It's an automated thing. And it was flagged. It wasn't even public yet. Um, I started the upload process after editing it. I went to dinner and went to the movies. And as I'm driving to go meet up, um, I get an email and it's like, your content's been flagged and has been removed worldwide. I'm like, wow, that's pretty hefty for something that (laughs) hasn't even been released yet. Um, So we we just got some minority report on a video all of a sudden. Like, you know, no video to see here. So wait, they can remove stuff from the internet. It just has to be Google. Well, they can remove stuff from the internet. <laughs> it just helps that if it hasn't really hit the internet yet. Right. Yeah. So it's so like we should pre- just speed that section up at like three point eight speed. Ooh, yes. And then auto tune it. <laughs> that way, their scanners are just like, nope, that's some hip hop song that we have in the database. Yeah. So this has launched. A, this has launched an investigation into what is considered fair use and what isn't, because obviously, you know, if there's a human running through it, you know, we we have basically everything that would pretty much tell you this is fair use i mean we're, we're talking over it it's it's we're reviewing a trailer we're talking about a movie while airing some of the content on it and uh by all intents and purposes i mean that's that's two minutes <laughs> of our hour and a half long show yeah so if it were a human looking at it it's like oh obviously this isn't nefarious no one's trying yeah. to steal no one's trying to get our money for this two and a half minute segment <laughs> in fact that, they're probably helping um, no, we probably wouldn't help anything. Now, <laughs> there was the uh, issue of the fair use lawsuit uh, recently, where a woman, and I'm not—I wonder how much she won, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it was—I I think um, I know about that case. Per- yeah, it perks my ears up. It was—it was a birthday party she was recording. Oh yeah, and there's a song in the background. There's a song in the background. Yeah, and this like triggered an international incident because it was the gigantic copyright claim, like you're stealing our music and everything. I was like, seriously. You know, if your kid wants to dance to Prince's Nothing Compares to You, let the kid dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, but in it, uh, they said that you have to allow... Not only do you have to allow fair use, but you have to make sure 
uh, it's your uh, if you're going to uh, post a DMCA, you have to make sure there is that this that it's qualified. Yeah. you can't just auto. Yeah, auto they were supposed ban. to disable the f- being, but you know they they vote on all that and it may not have kicked in yet. Mm-hmm. So and uh, not to get well, we should get political because this is actually something that affects. Oh no, our. It affects not only the podcast industry, but a lot of things that we love. Mm-hmm. Um, this uh, the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Yeah, um, there is a lot of vague language concerning copyright, and um, and there's a lot of protections that extend copyright even further, which will prevent things going into the public domain. Um, there's no reason for anyone to own a copyright for 250 years. No, unless your name is Disney. So even, even still, yeah, even, even still, even, even still. still, I mean, it's, it, it's. I read some article the other day about um, they're ramping up production to remake all of their movies in an attempt to put renew another the claim, yeah, to yeah. renew the copyright on it. Because if you don't do anything, if you don't renew the property or whatever in a certain amount of time, well, didn't releasing a lot of that on HD or you know the digital brushing of them that's or whatever they do kick it back in yeah, that's why they're we, doing that new the new remake of like like Lion King yeah. just came out Aladdin the diamond edition is what they're called those yeah. are considered re-releases yeah they're considered re-releases um but they're even going further cuz I've read about a reboot for Aladdin um where they're they're talking about rebooting Aladdin but they don't want to have the genie and some other things in there they're basically turning it into a different story um so there's a lot of uh, if you look at the lingo of the TPP, like the the full text of it was actually just released. Yeah, I saw or, that about a week just, ago or so. Huh? Yeah, it was just leaked because no one really intended for anyone in the public to know about this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you go through, I mean, Reddit, for good or bad, Reddit's a great resource for these kind of things because they kind of summarize it for you yeah. and show you like here's real here's all the dangerous parts that you need to know about. Um, everything from everything from copyright to things that would affect um, drone use. <laughs> like personal, personal unmanned flight, like flying vehicle kind of thing, uh, or unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs. Yeah. Um, th- there's medications. All, yeah, medications. They they've got it so all on the TPP. Yeah. The idea that you may not be able to to <laughs> to create a product <laughs> in America and label it Canadian bacon because uh-huh. the name of it is intrinsic to one of the partners of the TPP. Could, could it be American oh, wow. Canadian bacon? What's this? Could it be American Canadian bacon? I want Italian American Canadian bacon and really confuse everybody. <laughs> yeah, because I ate like a three meat Italiano special like pizza today for dinner, and I'd, I'd hate for that to be something different. They just call it the American meat, right? I the, mean, <laughs> that, you the, can't have Chinese food anymore. It'll just be it'll just be <laughs> China pizza. Cafe is just what cafe. No one's gonna know the difference. That yeah, dragon's out yeah. in front of that cafe. Wonder what that means. <laughs> the so, Chinese cafe. So you said you said leaked when I when I when I heard first heard about it. I walked into work and they were. They were talking about it. Did a quick Google search, and it showed it was on the Gov website for yeah. for the White House. So I mean, it sh- took from what I saw, it was the Obama administration releasing it. Yeah, it, it's finally been fully released. It has it. Okay, it, so it you was, saw it. Leaked it was leaked before? about eighteen days prior to. Okay. Yeah. Was, dude, yeah, they they're like, well, um, I, I don't watch <laughs> the news, so I'm just ev- like, everyone's oh. seen it. And you know, when, when as soon as it leaked, the next day or even that night on on the twenty four hour news channels. I mean, they they had you know pretty much links up to it because <laughs> everyone wanted to read that thing. I mean, it, yeah. it was po- the register had it up. Like, I mean, a lot of a lot of places was promoting yeah. everyone and, and to go read it. it. It's it's difficult because we're not really having, we don't really have like legit news networks. Um, mm-hmm. The majority of where, the majority of, or where I've heard a majority about the TPP has been either through the web or podcasts. Um, no one mainstream's talking about it, except for maybe like tested. Um, you know, they they've talked about it on and off. The Adam Savage podcast has talked about it, um, and other sort of websites or other. None you know, of my basketball podcasts have talked about it yet. Yeah, well, it doesn't really <laughs> it doesn't really impact you. And I don't think I mean, I've heard of anything about the Nerdist or Adam Carolla shows on it. Um, I actually haven't listened. I haven't listened, but they've they've talked about. It. I mean, like Rogan's talked about it. Oh, of course. Savage has talked about it because I mean, I, I would be interested to see what Corolla's take on it is. Me because, too. That's one I'd actually listen to. Yeah, like he's he's pretty open minded about that kind of stuff, and he would really like he likes to to bring out. He's not, not really open minded. I mean, like in many ways, this this thing that we do, this podcast thing that we do, wouldn't exist without Adam Corolla. Um, he uh. was he was the, one of the first ones in that made it happen in a major way, 
and he's taken the brunt of he he's the one that's taken the brunt of the shitstorm on the legal front for this industry. Um, everything from bogus copyright or not copyright claims, but uh, um, uh, patent claims and everything else. He's the one that's fronted or had to put up the most of the money to to fight these things. Uh, basically, Adam Kroll and Kevin Smith. Yeah, Kevin they've, Smith. they've been the ones that have been fighting this battle. Um, so, <laughs> you know, the, something like the TPP that could have a major impact on what we do and what we talk about. Um, you know, we've seen it on and off, even with uh, even with like YouTube commentary or YouTube uh, YouTube videos with video game gameplay walkthroughs. Mm-hmm. You know, basically people saying like, "Well, you're making money off of things that we make money off of," even though it's a very symbiotic relationship with both partners. You know, making money. Um, I think by by far and large, I know I know like so. Call of Duty count, re- it was released today. Yeah. Um, I know. I know how I buy things. I'm done with pre buying anything um, b- before it's released. What's going to dictate if I buy something or not, especially on the video game front, is what I see on YouTube. How does the gameplay look? How excited do the commentators seem about the game? What are the major gripes about it? What are the gameplay faults? And these hardcore guys that are on it and making these reviews the day it's released, they're the ones that are going to dictate what I buy. Um, It's the same way for Guitar Gear. Um, I go and look at reviews. I go and look at sound or listen to sound clips and demos and everything else before I say, this seems like it's cool enough for me to buy. Um, and I think that's that's the way with a lot of different things. I mean, oh, that's that's more the the millennials' way they're doing things. I mean, you, we've stayed close to to into the industry, the tech industry. We've kind of had to support all the new the new sites and social media as you know everything that's come out with family or work or whatever. But you know, that's really the way. You know, the same with cutting the cord, going streaming. You know, they they watch yeah. Twitch instead. They'll go go find a channel and watch it. You know. That Total War, uh, the Battle Hammer thing, everything I've seen has been gameplay that they posted on on YouTube, and that will be the next game. I'm buying, I'm building a new computer for that game. Yeah. For which one? The the new Total War Battle ha- or Warhammer hmm. should come out uh, sometime next year. Is there a trailer we can watch? Um, there is a. Uh, <laughs> there's some alpha content out. Um, there's about a 12 minute one that would probably be best. Um, it seems I don't know if you, you remember the old ones we used to play. Uh, we played medieval total medieval. war. <laughs> yeah, I heard on one of the podcasts I wasn't here that y'all were trying to to mimic it, and y'all did not can't do, do so it. Well. Can't yeah. do it, man. <laughs> that's that's your show. That's that's Neil's thing. I, I always feel that whenever we have like a multi a, a multi syllable word come up, you just wait for me. In, to do it. Yeah. yeah, that's in that weird realm where it's got like eyes and e's, and you know you can really go either way with it. I really miss it when you're not here for those. Because <laughs> I go the long, most drawn-out way possible on all yeah. of them. To, yeah. But, um, yeah, that Total War where you got to actually do... Like, you know, when you play Civilization, when when you attack with a catapult, it's not a single catapult. It's that unit, that legion of catapults, you know? Um, and, and what Total War let you do was actually zoom down into that and control some of them individually. Mm. So with that concept, they've also added some of what we saw in Warcraft 3, which a lot of people didn't like, but it was like the hero classes. So you're going to be able to have, you know, a 15 to 20 foot troll come out with a bunch of goblins, and that would be your fighting unit. You can grab half of them and drag them out to the left to block stuff nice. coming in and like all sorts of stuff. And and it has that 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 gameplay that we like that Warcraft feel that that fantasy realm feel so for those you know the games that came out uh through years now um through that company they had ones that were just very very war based like war simulators um not really simulators but they kind of are battle I consider like Battlefield 1942 essentially a simulator cuz it's it's that realistic yeah. but you know the way you were the general you know you could sit up on the hill on the hill but then you know you you could get down at the bottom and and just really make a difference in the battle itself versus essentially rolling a D20 or, you know, a set of D6s and seeing who took damage based off the dice roll. You could kind of make it a little more one-sided, but, you know, the computer games are a lot different from when I played that. I played that, you know, early 2000s, maybe 2002, 2003. So just the way the the AI works in games nowadays, it's going to be so much more fun because, you know, you used to have a huge advantage when you could think and play a game if they gave you, you know, access down to the unit itself yeah you could really have an advantage because the computer was going to you know, operate in blocks the dumb you know dummy logic nowadays 
they got that down. You know, they <laughs> the AI, the AI instead <laughs> of video games has actually been quite impressive. Um, I'm a race nerd. Yeah. Um, the know. F1, the new F1 2015. Um, the difference between 2014 and 2015, and how much more competitive the AI got, yeah. and how it would block it would block racing lines just like another real driver would. Um, how it would set up passes, you know, how it would cut off for different race lines. I was like, I was really impressed. Well, you know, when we were kids, the controllers we had, we can go back to Atari, hmm. a joystick and a single button. Yeah. Um, if you had the little sliding one, yeah, you could use that <laughs> as well. Um, you know, you brought in the what, Super Nintendo controller last week, showing off your your Raspberry Pi. Yeah. It had two triggers, the little D pad, and four buttons. Start and select didn't do a whole lot in the games usually. Just I thought pausing. that one only had two. No, that was the old school. It was four, right? Four buttons, six total. Two, yeah. You had two bumpers and four buttons on right. the on the right. It side. was the original NES that was the two yeah, red buttons two. and just the D pad. Okay. Yeah. You know, nowadays, you know, you guys play consoles a lot more than I do. You've got fifteen buttons, even mice. Think about us computer players. You know, when you're playing a game, you've got six or seven buttons for your thumb and your pinkies to mm-hmm. be able to to do things to map them out. And then these games are getting stronger. You have games that you know you plug a real guitar into a box and it teaches yeah, you how to play. Yeah, I have that. We didn't have any of that stuff when we were kids. You know, we had the joystick and a button with Space Invaders. Yeah, so. I can I can say <laughs> what they've done with Rocksmith. If you have a kid that's interested in in playing guitar, and actually uh, one of our friends and listeners, Stacy, um, I took uh, I took it over to her house because her daughter's starting to get into playing guitar. And uh, the idea that you can plug a real guitar into a video game and it tracks it—it's all polyphonic tracking. So it detects every input, even down to like a bent note. And it's like, no, you should bend it like this. And you can actually break a song down and learn different sections of it and get it spot on. I mean, just as a training tool, yeah. it, it it would be fantastic if every song known to man was released on it because it would make <laughs> it would make being in a cover band so much easier. <laughs> hey guys, like let's all get plugged into our computers and practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you get a phone call at the last minute and say like, "Hey, I need a guy to fill in for these this specific song list," and you can spend a day just going through Rocksmith and learn them, yeah, inside and out. Um, if I were going to learn to play the guitar, that's the option I would go. Yeah, I'd, I'd find a friend that had a guitar. I'd borrow it. I download the software, get whatever you got to plug it up. Is it USB? Is there a little box or something? How does how does that work? It's a, I mean, it's a quarter inch to USB converter, okay, little so converter just, cable. Yeah, plugs right in. Nice. Plugs right in the front of the PS4. Does that come with the game, or can you buy that at like Guitar Center? They have it bundled both ways. Yeah. So you can buy it with the cable. You can buy the cable separately. Okay. They even have a they even have a starter kit that comes with a Gibson Les Paul guitar. Huh. So it's it's actually a pretty affordable package. It's a cheap guitar. I mean, it's not a Gibson. It's a it's an Epiphone. So it's like yeah. you know, made in China. So <laughs> it's not a bad guitar, though. But it's still though. a Les Paul. It's it's still very playable. Yeah, I, I I make no secret about how how big a fan I am of Korean guitars. Yeah. I own a lot of them, and they're actually really good. <laughs> um, I've heard the same from from Kevin too. So. Yeah, I sat in a room comparing the Korean Epiphone to the American-made Gibson, it, the same guitar. Yeah. I mean, they're the same AJ two hundred style, uh, advanced jumbo. And I sat with both of these guitars for four hours, and I was like, there's no way. The American one sounds dead. <laughs> it sounded horrible. And for a $3,500 markup, yeah, now you can keep that. And right. plus the electronics, too. Like, I plug both of them into the big Bose. Like, they have a really wicked Bose um, acoustic amplification system. And uh, plugged in both, and I was like, this Epiphone shit sounds like the Eagles Live. <laughs> and the Gibson sounds like dead horse meat. So... Easy oh, choice. I really want to know what dead horse meat sounds That's like. What now. I was ask. Can, can you give us a little example? It's of a, dead it's horse a, meat a, a, imagine. So it's kind of like if you were doing Foley for the Walking Dead, and you just threw like a forty-five day aged steak up against the wall, but you aged it badly. You just hung it on a laundry line. Yeah, like not even like climate controlled. You know, no humidity control. You just set it on the back porch. Did you salt it first? Not even no. No Pe- brine. Pepper. No. Okay. Well, like you just threw some like sardine juice. Hope it had enough salt. <laughs> yeah, you did everything that you could do wrong. You did it wrong. Yeah, oh. we just went down the, a dark alley. But well, yeah, well, at the so end of that alley is a, a forty-five pound chunk of meat hanging yeah. on a laundry line. <laughs> <laughs> sardine juice. It's been yeah. there for a month. But that, yeah, that, that the zombie imagine. apocalypse. None of the zombies have eaten it. Well, it's yeah. not alive. Oh, it still so smells. He's a dead horse it's, meat. It's gonna smell good for a minute. Did well, I tell well, you about the, the dream zombies. that I had? No. Oh God. Oh, I'm kind of dream just... about zombies. No, let's hear this. Okay. Okay. Zombie dreams. Oh, I fun. woke up with this at three in the morning, and it hijacked my brain for the rest of the night. I'd got no sleep on this because I was just laughing. I was laughing hysterically. 
I had this weird sort of half awake dream about hipster zombies that are vegetarians. And even <laughs> even after being undead, they were still very adamantly opposed to eating meat. This sounds like another movie. Yeah. Yeah. You're this right. one actually may may actually <laughs> it could work. Cause the I was having a conversation earlier with some friends and, and I think the zombie movement is on its way out. Yeah. yeah. Or at uh, least the pause. Hope so it's, I Well, I mean, if you just follow actually I was listening to Nerdist, um, they had uh Bill from uh True Blood on mm-hmm. and it's so trippy listening to more and more podcasts. I've been trying to open up my horizon. I, I got more time with headphones in my ears at work lately with my new role. Yeah. So I've uh, been the nerdist uh, just these dudes are all Brits. Like you don't know who you're who you're I could I, I fast forward through whatever commercials they start all of them with because they all have you know sponsors. 30 minutes of here's my sponsors follow me on this. That, yeah. You know, but you know all the things that we haven't had a need to do yet. Yeah, because no one, no one cares. <laughs> no about one us gives yet. us money, and no one listens yeah. anyway. <laughs> but you know, I get through that, and it's like I, I know the name of the person who's supposed to be on there. I know who they're supposed to be talking to. Yeah. But I don't get those first introductions, and when there's more than one of them, I, I don't know which Brit is which. Yeah. It's like <laughs> you both play white Americans in the TV show I watch. <laughs> so if you could announce who you are, so I'm like waiting to hear. Okay, that one's uh, he's married to her. Okay, that made more sense now. That one's that guy. Yeah. But it's yeah, the, the nerdist. There's a lot of he gets a lot of Brits through there. I mean, well, most of the actors <laughs> and superhero stuff. Yeah, yeah, are British. <laughs> uh, one of the ones I'm a big fan of. I've actually taken a few weeks off of listening to podcasts, um, but I just jumped back on today um, because Mark Maron. Mark Maron has an incredible show, um, and it, it's not even about. It's not even recorded that well. Like it's not even a professional studio. It's in it's in his garage with a couple of mics. Huh. Um, but this is the dude that interviewed Obama. Huh. You know, a podcast got Obama on and got him to come to his the garage. garage. Yeah, nice. he came to the garage. Nice. And it's in some nondescript suburb out in California somewhere. Um, not like a not like a impressive house. Like they, right. the neighbors were actually pissed that they had to like court <laughs> deal off the with all that. Yeah. Had to deal with the, <laughs> had to deal with the secret service for, and snipers for, on the roof. All this for a podcast this is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, he had, uh, he, he's had this huge obsession for, for SNL and he's had probably 20 to 30 cast members past, you know, past and present on his show. Talk about every aspect of that show. Um, he had an interview, uh, a, a, a possible audition that went bad. Um, could you could you click any louder? Could you? Could you? Could you? I hear music somewhere too. Uh, yeah, TV downstairs. Ah. But uh, he fa- he finally got Lauren Michaels on. Oh wow! And In his garage? No, no. He he, he went there. He went, he went there. to the show. Yeah, I think that they'd be like, you know what? <laughs> we got to set up. We we, we actually have an extra mic we can plug. <laughs> in. Yeah. No, he brought his own gear. He brought everything to New York. But <laughs> nice. I mean, it's just the fact that he has. He doesn't even have a day off. Because even on his day off, when the rest of the cast has a day off, they work Tuesday through Sunday. Yeah. Uh, or Tuesday through Saturday. Sunday's supposed to be their day off, and Monday starts pre-production. But even on Sunday, Michaels is taking, you know, meeting the guest at the airport, whoever's going to be the guest, the host for that week, um, taking them to dinner. There's usually. a lot of logistics to take care of when you have. Yeah. Yeah. The dude hasn't taken a day off in probably 35 years. Yeah. He, he, He's I probably mean, had a sick day somewhere. Sick day here and there. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's a very, very busy show. There's actually been some, like, really good documentaries um, about the, the behind the scenes. Actually, uh, uh, James Franco. James Franco is like a really... The, the guy has been like sort of stealth producer and, and documentarian for a while now. He's actually yeah. done some really good work behind the scenes. But he had a... Uh, he made a documentary about SNL not too long ago. And the behind the scenes stuff, the frantic pace that they run at, um, it's people sleeping in... No one leaves that office. Yeah. No one leaves that studio. They're there 24-7 until the show goes on air. So it's it's a it's a pretty frantic pace. But his podcast... Um, the the quality of the interviews that he's done is it, it's outstanding. Hmm. I don't know what the original point I was trying to make was, but um, we're talking about podcast Marin Good. Yeah, Mar- Marin Good, Marin Good, Marin Good podcast. <laughs> I actually had a um, this week uh, this week in Marvel Agents of Shield podcast uh, had all the EPs um, Clark Gregg, yeah, uh, you know Coulson, and then of course one of the EPs that that host it. And I was kind of surprised. Um, I thought my headphones were messing with me. Usually, it's just him and one other person. Um, but they made comments about how a few of them were sharing a mic, and that's why there was a brief delay. And you heard, oh, like a one lot of the of shows that. that we did. Yeah, like you hear a lot of that. <laughs> I think, kind of I stuff. think actually the first episode that Mike was on. <laughs> <laughs> 
And the the weird thing was like these are all the executive producers, the director, you know, you, the showrunner was on there. There's like eight eight people, half of them Brits, don't know who said what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh five of them were in my left ear. <laughs> and three of them were in my right ear. These these are like the top brass of of Agents of Shield on this podcast. So I'm wondering like are they doing this on an iPhone in a closet somewhere? Well, like, you know, <laughs> the top brass doesn't usually ha- handle sound mixing directly. Well, so. you know, this is a this is a weekly podcast. Or yeah, he does a podcast a week. I yeah. mean, you would assume. I guess maybe he just has never had a group that large. You know, when we have more than more than four, we have some extra things we need to do to make sure that our production quality stays. Yeah, <laughs> stays yeah. as high and as if it you, is. And if, and if you listen, if for nothing, if you recommend this to somebody else, do it for the quality of the show. <laughs> because I'm damn proud of the quality of the show. If you li- if you listen to podcasts at the rate that I consume podcasts, you realize a lot of them are dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I mean, we should put something on the wall behind Kyle. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's in the works. We should just put a mirror or a screen of the camera. So it's just like an Inception one way or the other. Uh, Inception gets mentioned again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I try to bring it up at least once because I did watch it this week. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I've kind of noticed the same thing. I mean, our our podcasts are slightly different on which ones we listen to. We have some of the yeah. same nerdy ones that we, we follow. I do a little more Marvel TV, Cinematic Universe. Well, you think uh, about it, like not many people pay attention to this medium, and they really should because it's taking over like mainstream media. If you think about a show like the the or Talking Dead, yeah, that's a podcast with a live studio audience. It's really not that far that that different from what Chris Hardwick does on the Nerdist podcast. Yeah, it's the same thing. You just put an audience on it. I mean, essentially, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the way I I see a lot of it is us almost is, is essentially a talk show. The same thing yeah. Howard Stern's been doing on radio for years, except for he we'd record to a file. <laughs> you know, yeah. he, he's he's yeah. on the air. I mean, it's and it's funny that he he bad mouths this media i mean he's he yeah he is the pioneer of of a lot of what radio became and why something like this can exist um but he dumps on this medium constantly yeah he's not a fan yeah and i mean like congrats on being like the last bastion of a dying medium but well you mean every other thing on the internet right now i mean in the past 10 to 15 years i mean how many times do i have to see what sat got at some ra- a- like Asian market for yeah, food. I really hate that. I mean, that's the kind of society we live in right now, where every meal someone eats, any anything that happens, there's a picture up on five different websites. There's a post on it here and that, well, and that's essentially what this is. Yeah. Like, we spent a little bit of money, got some mics, we got a couple cameras, and the same thing that these big companies are doing. You know, like um, what's his name. Bill Simmons, you know, the ESPN guy I was talking about last yeah. week, week before, he's getting a big show on HBO. It's essentially his podcast. <laughs> yeah. But now it's it's going to be on a primetime channel that you have to pay $10 a month to, to have. But it's 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 the same exact thing, you know. Yeah. And anyone can do it now. We are, are significantly more set up than a lot of the ones we've seen locally and other places where it really is their phone. Yeah. And, I mean, obviously we're going to get a higher production quality because of the, the stuff we put into it, but... A lot of times, those turn out really, really good. I mean, anyone who wants to do it can. And, yeah. And well, some of the other local podcasts, like we we went to a panel. We talked about it uh, what, a few months ago. Yeah. And they were telling us, you know, you, oh, you plug in the head to, to your phone and you hit record, and that's how you do a podcast. Yeah. And we're like, oh, we never did that. But you know that you you we can. Started. It's that yeah, easy and not now. To dog, yeah. And not to, to, be to be dog to do those it. guys. No, not to dog those guys. They've gotten five hundred episodes yeah. in, and they're still using the same stuff, and it yeah. sounds. Horrible. Hey, if, if not for nothing, we may not have a lot to talk about. We may not have. We might not be plugged in as much as these guys. But hey, how easy is this on your ears right now? <laughs> Think about that. But you know, my point just being that you know everything anyone does is posted on the internet. Yeah. So, you know, right now when my phone's on Wi-Fi, it automatically downloads five to seven podcasts instead of me listening to the buzz and listen to the same droning every morning and the same music that I don't like. You mean I can you listen don't to like bad stripper DJ voice? No, I don't like not like that. <laughs> but you know, I mean, there are days where I'm like, I'm just gonna play fifty cent for on the ride over there. You know, like <laughs> yeah. but I'd rather listen to the Nerdist podcast with someone on a show that I watched for six years. Even though I'm not watching the show he's talking about now. Yeah. You know, the the bastard executioner or whatever that he's in now, which actually kind of seemed cool after listening to him yeah. talk about it. <laughs> I may have to give it a try. That's the thing, too. Like, these podcasts have sold me on watching a lot of things that I'd have never given a, a second thought to. Yeah. 
But I mean, they did, it hadn't taken on like Tumblr and Imager and Twitter and Facebook and stuff has yet. I think. Well, a lot of those are like quick. This is a very. This is a much deeper. This is a much deeper media format. Um, Twitter, Tumblr, those are great for like really small, yeah. like quick hits, small morsels. A lot of these podcasts go deep, and you know there was a complaint at the uh, Halloween party about the length of our shows. Yeah, um, you must not listen to podcasts because the shortest one I listen to is Adam Savage's at forty five minutes. Um, I actually I have depends on how they're segmented, but a lot of the ones I listen to, I have four of or five of them that are thirty minutes. Um, I have two that are forty five minutes, mm-hmm. um, and then a lot of the ones that go into things the way we do, which are more of my fantasy basketball. And some of the other, like I have a Supernatural one I listen to at the Crossroads. And those those go, they say an hour, but they always go an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. That's usually, you see the wrap up, they're about to start, but there's always more conversation that comes. And, and this is this is why we're doing it. You know, I mean, yeah. a lot of times that last 20 minutes of the podcast, Cause, you Because cool stuff comes up. coming and down, it's hilarious, <laughs> you know? So yeah. it's really, I understand, you know, like me and you have talked, I like... Section one, section two, section yeah. three, <laughs> everything, you know, I know what I need to prepare for, that kind of stuff. And we we tried a little bit, we kinda wing it now, but you know, it's it works and, and a lot of times when you have a, a moving conversation like that and it's like, you know, the situation's live, everyone's adding to it, it's hard to say, Well, guys, we've only got six more minutes, so yeah. what are we gonna squeeze in? So and Yeah, then, and I I a lot of that media style I can't stand. I d I don't want to do things in in really really dissatisfying Fox News three-minute bits. You have to have extremely rotating or revolving content to be able to support that. Yeah. And we're all over the place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, if, uh, we, if we were any more structured, like, wine day wouldn't work for me. Because y'all be like, no! <laughs> I'm putting that in the pro column. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the wine, well, the, the, the wine and NyQuil days yeah. with Kyle. This is the, this is the NyQuil days. The first, the first one, NyQuil and tea. It's delicious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually had the thought the, the first show that I missed when I was out sick. Um, I was I was dosed up and I was just thinking like, they got it. They, <laughs> they got it because I don't really think I can think about how it's supposed to work if they have a question. <laughs> 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 I was exhausted and I was full of NyQuil and I was like, it's 1030 and the hangouts haven't gone off yet. It's probably good. <laughs> Or it's all gone horribly bad. <laughs> <laughs> and they just don't want to admit it. We, I don't know what happened to the file. Yeah. You, YouTube said something detected deleting files and backups. That, <laughs> well, that's only if you piss off Lionsgate. <laughs> yeah, I've got to go make a list now of things I can't talk about. This is going to be work. Yeah, yeah. Um, Are, we can't talk about Lionsgate? Nope. It's against the rules. They're only distributing probably one of the biggest movies that's going to hit the end of this, uh, the, in this year. So, But still... I don't think it's anything that we really talk about on the podcast anyway, because we haven't before. Spell it so that the kids don't don't know what it is. Oh, it's the Hunger Games movie. Oh, uh, there there will be brief conversations about that, yeah. especially if Ed's here, because she wears a pretty pretty tight outfit. I'm curious. No, that's a good. That's a good. Uh, <laughs> I, I like, like the, the series. series. I read the series. Uh, I'm curious to see how well they they do the last the last book. Or yeah, I mean, my gripe with it is like they've they've taken a fairly strong actress and given her such a whiny character. Yeah, the last movie, she yeah. sucked. Yeah. Big time. Like, the, the performance just wasn't there. Yeah. I don't know if it was performance, if it was just bad directing, but either way, it didn't really... Yeah. I, I just kept thinking through that entire movie, like, I don't know why she's whining so much. Like, she, she had, like, like a, she was glazed over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, to me, it just seemed like, oh, she must be high. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the part that I'm looking forward to on the last one is to see how they did the uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman role. Mm. Well, yeah. supposed to be all CGI, and, and from the part, no, it's not all. I mean, because he 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 had filmed most of it. Well, I thought I that was only for the first part. Of 60% it. Yeah, I think percent. it was only for the first. Uh, that was the for the first segment. part. The second part of the final, he didn't film anything yet. I thought. Oh. I don't so I thought this was all. CGI. We got someone about to They're gonna Paul check. Walker it, right? Mm. Did you guys see Fast Seven? Not or is yet. it Fast Six no. or Fast Seven or whatever like that? I think I have. I, it's on Plex. Yeah, we saw it in theater. It. Like, I, I don't think it'll be. It'll be obviously more revealing on. Like home 1080p, yeah, you know, Blu-ray quality, whatever. It'll be more revealing where you're like, "Yep, that's fake. Okay, that's real. That's fake. That's fake. That's <laughs> fake." On the big screen where you have, and this is where I love the medium. I like, 
I like 24 frames a second. I like I like somewhat of a blurry picture because it feels like film. You know, that's the way it's supposed yeah. to feel. You know, when I was, we were doing all our research, buying cameras and stuff, there were, there was a lot of articles. If you want to, if you want to get the actual, you know, real feeling for it, here's what you should do versus yeah. getting the crisp, you know, like sport view. And and of course, there's different things. Like, yeah, if if, if I'm you know recording nephew's soccer game, I don't want it to look like a movie. You know, it's it's him. Oh, I want soccer. I want it to look like Steven Soderbergh red digital <laughs> camera. I want it to look very <laughs> very dramatic. <laughs> but you know, if you're if if you're recording something that's supposed to be you know more of a production, yeah, then yeah, definitely. I it, it's weird seeing how many different options there were just for the little things we got. You know, our little seventy Ds. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of ridiculous, but. There, that was always the fight. Do you want this or do you want this? You know, which side do you want? And that's why I got the one I got because it was a pretty good mix of being able to do both. Yeah, and I still feel bad that I haven't done anything with it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've got. I mean, to to date, I've taken three pictures of of Kyle's dog. Um, I've taken a handful of video around the house just testing stuff. Um, the the gimbals and things that I made actually work really well. The the different rigs. Um, but I need to rebuild them because they, I didn't really like it, once you build something like, especially what I'm getting into with the quadcopter and everything else, like the development process never stops. Cause once you actually build it and it's a physical thing in your hands, you immediately find 30 things you can do better. <laughs> so you're constantly chasing those minor improvements. You've, you've gotten this bundle of crap out of the way and now here's the next. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it was kind of like to go back to like the Lauren Michaels thing. He actually had a quote on the Mar- Marin podcast that hit me in an interesting way. He said, like, the, the primary driver of what he does on the show, it's it's this constant thing he says all the time. We don't go on because we're ready. We go on because it's 1130. Yeah. And so there's that regiment to it that you're always going to just keep showing up. Uh, it's it's kind of a it's kind of an interesting thing. Like, if you just keep showing up, well, and, and it could be bad. It could be good. But either way, it's going to be. And once it's done, you let it go. And, you know, there's been times when that show has been much more popular than it is now and times that it's been significantly less popular than it is now. But how long has that show been running? Yeah, we're on 42 <laughs> yeah. years, I think. Like, it's not a soap opera. Yeah. And it's been going on for that long. Yeah, <laughs> like, for I mean, for a live, <laughs> for a live comedy show, it's, uh, it, it, it's, not, it's not always great. <laughs> no, I mean, there are... There are like right now, there, multiple there are years <laughs> I, I skip it. But the big draw in for that is, you know, who's going to be on the show. There are certain yeah. people Christopher Walken's on. I don't care who else is there. I, I'm going to watch Christopher Walken. Yeah. You know, um, the Baldwin, the older Baldwin. Yeah. Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. I definitely yeah. watch him on there. I mean, I've been watching him on there since the mid nineties. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Canteen boy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's, that's the beauty in that is that you do have someone that that's, you know, well, not new. I mean, Goodman's been on there how many times? Same with Baldwin. Yeah, going on. Well, well, these days, like for a season. (laughs) These days, the host really does make or break the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, whereas in the past, it was your writers and your and your cast. I mean, they could have a bad host on and still have a great show. It hasn't been that case in in many years. Well, nowadays, it doesn't have to be because you got a group of of guys sitting around a table like this. I mean, you do some of your stand up stuff. Locally, you can put it in front of a mic right here, right now, if you want, and yeah. get it out there to how many people with social media. You don't have to go through an institution like Saturday Night Live to become popular. Oh, not at you all, know, Chris man. Chris Farley and, Dude, and the internet Spade didn't have the internet like yeah. we did to put themselves out there. You know, so the number of YouTube celebrities, and I mean, for both both good and bad, um, you have people putting out crap content <laughs> and making millions. You have people putting out excellent contact uh, content and making a decent living. You have people blatantly ripping off other content and getting multi million dollar deals off of it. The yeah. Fat Jew. Yeah. There's a guy named the Fat Jew who actually through <laughs> through the will of the internet finally got his comeuppance. And uh, it was actually um, just about all the comics. Uh, there's a subreddit for stand up comedy. And through their collective efforts, got his deal on Comedy Central canceled. And I think it was Comedy Central. And also, he was supposed to have a recent... He, he just released a book. And he was supposed to have this tour through uh, through the, uh, all the Barnes & Noble stores to do signings and, and public appearances and Q&As. And through their efforts of making phone calls, like, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and want royalties for that because, you know, he part of the book is something that I wrote. <laughs> so, where my money? Right, you know th- those kind of things. So I've seen a movie about this one time. What was it? it? Had Kevin Smith, 
Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah. They, they oh, get, that's get right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> same exact thing. I don't know why it took me so long <laughs> to realize it. I know. I'm waiting. I'm like, all three of you should. Oh, yeah, it. yeah. Jay and Silent Bob strike <laughs> back. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You. <laughs> no, just because I mean, th- dude, this whole I wasn't last. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking just I'm not trying to talk because I'm like it's raspy. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then I was like, like come five on, minutes guys, go by and Jed's like, oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, the first thing that popped on oh. my head was Clerks Two for some reason, and <laughs> yeah, then I, mean, I started having to work my way back. Out. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it, it went from Clerks Two to Mall Rats for some reason, and then yeah, I'm trying to work my way back to figure out where that happened. But yeah, <laughs> I wonder how, how they, Mall Rats Two is doing. Uh, who knows, man? Yeah. So speaking of Kevin, Kevin Smith, Smith, is is kind of all over the place, man. Has uh has anyone seen the Death of Superman Lives? I actually was uh, watching that last night at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> really, <laughs> really, is it worth watching? Um, I found it very interesting. A, okay. you get to make fun of Nicolas Cage in a Superman outfit wearing a wig. Um, it, it, it someone at somewhere thought that was a good idea. Yeah, it was Tim Burton. Burton. Tim Burton. <laughs> yeah. Tim dude, Burton like, like, they go through yeah. a lot of the concept art that, that they were putting into it, and like the different, like, these guys put this together, then Tim Burton told them this, and they turned it into this, and like a bunch of concept art. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it really feels like it was made in the 90s, but all the, the footage they're covering was from, like, 97, 98. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it does feel like VHS recorder over the shoulder, like when we were kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it has that look and feel to it, and, and you know, I mean... There's not a whole lot of digital stuff or CGI, anything, obviously, because yeah. of the time. So it feels like a dated documentary, but it had a lot of cool information. I, I didn't watch all of it. I'm going to set it to record or I'm going to download it. But, I mean, I caught about 45 minutes of it straight, uh, me and Dave, and just – it was <laughs> – he said it was better than basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, uh, it's funny because I mentioned that I think on one of our podcasts early episodes, and I forgot to download it and watch it. Yeah, but yeah, I've, I've I've seen a lot of the Nick Cage Superman, and I don't know what Tim Burton's obsession is I with see uh, the movie. My favorite comment in there was, "If anyone can make this work, it's Tim Burton." When they were talking yeah. about Nicolas Cage in the Superman outfit. I was- Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But his, <laughs> his deal about putting like what he's like, I don't care what the actor is, just put him in a rubber suit. And the only one that worked for was Michelle Fiverr. Like every other one was a bad choice. Just don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Like it. it Tim Burton's rubber suit fanat- fanaticism is what led to Joel Schumacher's bat nipples. <laughs> so I blame him for all of that. Okay. See, I'm a, I'm a Burton fan when it comes to. Like the real movies, like you know, I'm not a huge fan of. I like Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. Um, plug for Etten Games. They're going to be showing how off to, that this to, weekend. How yeah, to how play, to play. I think. The Munchkin came out for Nightmare yeah. Before Christmas and Walking Dead, so they're going to have some some games this weekend. I believe it's yeah. And those are those yeah. are significant Etten licenses, games. man. Those yeah, are pretty, that's that's, that's big. pretty awesome. So I mean, I'm, I may go up there this weekend just to test them out. Maybe get a couple pictures. Uh, depends on. If it's raining or not. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, um, Arcade Expo's this weekend. Oh, that's um, right. Maker Fair's this weekend. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on, and it all happens at once. Um, Maker Fair, a buddy of mine, (laughs) well, Kenneth, um, he said, like, We all know know Kenneth by now. Yeah, you all know Kenneth by now. Uh, He said, like, Maker Fair would be great if it weren't for the likelihood that it's going to be, like, 90% of, you know, 90% full of 12-year-olds showing off their Arduino projects. (laughs) <laughs> you know, if you want to, if you want to see something like real, something real, something cool, and then you're gonna have just like a group of Warhammer 40k people coming in. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know how it would go, but I, I would. I was hoping to dig into it to find more information about CNC stuff, more yeah. 3D printing stuff. But you really have to do. I mean, there's there's a local maker group that probably gets more in depth with that because they've got like big equipment. They've got yeah. really expensive, um, really expensive stuff in their shop. Um, but the the uh, arcade expo looks interesting. Um, I'm still, I have two LCD panels yeah. that I don't know what I'm going to do with. Um, but the idea right now is that they're going to be a mini pinball rig, nice. a, a mini virtual pinball rig, and a a, a bar top arcade machine. Um, since the Raspberry Pi thing is it, unbelievably affordable, is that what you would drive it with? Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, there's no reason not to. I mean, the only thing I haven't found yet is a virtual pinball um, system that I, mean, I haven't dug too deep on it, but I haven't found a virtual pinball system that works on Raspberry Pi yet. I know there's one for Windows um, that has a whole community that makes boards, that that, that makes tables. Yeah. And uh, they're very, very in-depth. Um, 
if you want a unique pinball experience where the table changes as you play it, hmm. they've done that. Nice. And it's it looks incredible. Um, so yeah, the the initial download you you buy their software. The initial download pack from their forums is like fifty thousand tables. Hmm. Nice. So that alone, it's pretty much the worth of the cost of admission. But yeah, building it wouldn't be too difficult just to make a, a, a one of the old like Miss Pac Man flat tables. Yeah, like two player player on either side with just that screen. Yeah, and your Raspberry Pi, and that way you could sit because I'm lazy. I don't like standing up. Well, the thing is, like the the <laughs> Raspberry Pi with uh, the Raspberry Pi with uh, pinball. The, this this specific virtual pinball, and I can't remember the name of it. I'll have to look up later. But this specific virtual pinball system, it's the graphics are incredible. Like it's it, they really push 1080p. Oh, nice. Um, it's it's got depth to it. Um, they even have it to where you have different functions for input for tilt and everything else. Huh. So it's it's very, very in-depth. Nice. Um, but, yeah, I don't think you can run that with a Raspberry Pi. That's unfortunate. With Because it's meant to run two displays at once, actually. Um, these guys that build these tables, the virtual tables, you have the play surface, and then you have the actual scoreboard in the background. Yeah, the top. And both of those change. Both of them are animated fully. You know, They've got some cool features built into it where – the old school pinball or the the mid tier or, or mid era pinball machines yeah. they had the monochromatic led displays yeah. or light displays in the background and those would animate kind of like the old school astrodome scoreboard would yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> i missed that era really cuz yeah. like that's like all where some of the greatest machines came from like terminator 2 adams family like that that early 90s era of pinball i didn't remember them animated yeah, yeah, they had like little graphic animations on the. Yeah, see, a lot of those um, when when balls went into certain pockets, you had to like read the screen to see what bonuses you got for what things. Yeah, and it always made me like lose mo- the eye on the ball. Yeah, when it when it went it off to the next me. level and got really confusing. Yeah, I was like, my cheat code's not working. There's no up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even get to up. <laughs> yeah, but these guys that are building these virtual pinball tables are actually putting t- together some really impressive rigs. I mean, if you if you take a 48 or 47 inch TV mm-hmm. and lay it, you yeah. know, not not wide ways but long ways, mm-hmm. lay it down on a table and then put another one behind it and you you can throw a little Intel NUC, those little uh those little all in one little computers um that are actually pretty cheap, 400 bucks for a tiny computer, like yeah. basically like the size of a uh, Apple Mini, okay. like Mac Mini or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah, really cool little computers. Fun. Rebel, Rebel. Right. <laughs> well, when Charlie got his arcade, I started looking into him because there's a few that I wouldn't mind having in my garage. Yeah. But I was like, I could just make one that has all the games on it. <laughs> I, man. That's what I want to do. I want a four-player gauntlet one that has all the games. Yeah. But I don't I think have room for it. Well, there's, I mean, there's tons of outfits, and there's, there's multiple, th- there's easy ways to figure out how to do it yourself. Um, you can build. I mean, you have tools. You have tools. Oh, no, you it, have a garage. My neighbor has two um, of the uh, shells. Yeah, and it's something he, like he already has all of the software. We never talked about doing it, but we both lack this thing called time. <laughs> so <laughs> that just dropped. So yeah, like Derek. One day. Derek has. Uh, I think he's. He may have already sold all of them already, but. He has he has his own. Yeah, I think he has a couple of them now. Um, the big four person stand up arcade machines. Yeah. There's a company that makes them specifically for emulators. Yeah. So they're the big four up, big TVs in the background and stuff like that. And then he bought uh, he bought the someone he had he contracted out to someone to have them CNC cut MDF, and he had like enough to make eight bar top shells, nice bar top cabinets. But it's just a. It, it really doesn't take any effort. The biggest part of the process is making it look good, mm-hmm. like buying custom vinyl graphics to go on the side and all that other stuff. You know, making your your backlit display in the front. All the rest of it's easy. Pop a display into it, wire up your buttons. All that's pretty yeah, easy. See that that's like ninety five percent of what I want. I just want some like that and some good speakers. <laughs> yeah. I I don't. I'm not gonna do pinball. I don't care about the big score screen in the back. I just want like a seventy inch TV. With a little pan, a podium essentially, that just has four people's joysticks and buttons that they could look at from afar. That'd yeah, be great. Yeah, you want uh, <laughs> you want like the uh, the final scene in like the Wizard. Yes, when they debuted, like the big the big the the curtain rolls up and it's yeah. Mario three. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need the entire cabinet. You can no, not it. really. I mean, it's no. it's fun to have and put some stickers on the side of like you know Sonic or. 
yeah. know, gauntlet or something. But there's something about it that feels more legit. Like the experience feels more intuitive. If you just invited people over and it's like, yeah, I've got joysticks, plug them in USB to a con- to a, a, a PC, <laughs> and it, was, it takes away from you know. But the design he was talking about, where where you've got. I apologize. Where you've got the <laughs> setup, you get your joystick set up like you would normally, yeah. but you don't have it in a cabinet. Instead, you get the, the podium, then it, it goes down to another thing that goes up, and you've got a mounted television. Yeah. Instead of an open cab, instead of that's a pool. essentially half of what the cabinets that Derek has. Like it's not like a full enclosed cabinet yeah. because these things were built towards you don't need a CRT TVs. in there anymore. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's essentially that same thing. It's a podium, and then you have like a uh, it goes down to a platform on the floor, and then it goes back up to. Okay. Yeah, a, a mount for a flat screen TV, depending on the size of the TV you have. Um, I mean, so a lot of the games. I know when we went on our family vacation, we went to a bowling alley, and they had a few of them that were kind of that way. Yeah, I mean, they had a little more molding, you know, around it to make it look like it was all one piece. Whereas, actually, um, <laughs> when Trevor and I were in Austin, we went to go see the Martian um, because the race got or qualifying got right. rained out. We had to do something, <laughs> so we figured, why not go see the Martian? And uh, we got to uh, we got to the little tinsel town up in Austin, and went to the little little uh, arcade game area. Yeah. And the duck hunt, like whatever the duck hunter, buck hunter, whatever the thing is, the thing that is basically duck hunt but with rifles and elk. Um, <laughs> it was in a reboot cycle, elk hunt? and they were using a Dell Optiplex three hundred and ninety to run it. Nice. <laughs> so it was just it was stuck creeping through post, and then would restart and creep through post again and restart. You didn't stick your USB stick in and fix it. No, no. I mean, it's all it's all locked inside of this cabinet because you know they don't want to, you can't control, delete, and blah blah blah, <laughs> or whatever. Um, but I thought it was hilarious because I have a stack of those at the office that I'm hoping to maybe one day get to care enough to clean them up to sell. <laughs> Otherwise, they're just I've got eight of them stacked in a cubicle. Well, you could have eight arcade machines. Yeah, I, I, I talked to one of the guys I work with because we're, we're we talk about this arcade thing a lot. He freaked out over the uh, the Raspberry Pi. Oh yeah, because he's uh he's got like maybe seven or eight of the old Xbox Ones. Yeah, that are not not X Bone, I should say, not the current Xbox One, the first generation <laughs> Xbox. We have to clarify now because they screwed up the naming scheme. Um, should have been like <laughs> Xbox Seven Twenty or Kickflip Ollie whatever grab. Um, but <laughs> Xbox X Games Edition. Um, I just made you another product. Send me money. Um, <laughs> but he mods the original Xboxes uh, to turn them into emulators. That was a big thing yeah. when the first Xbox was out. I've got one in my closet. I've got one too. Uh, oh, I have actually, I've took the hard drive out and got the chip to create all the. Uh, yeah, I've got it. Yeah, I just didn't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, and it kind of sucks that because I mean, now you have this gigantic, or I wouldn't say gigantic, but you have this big box that is only capable of outputting standard definition, and then you buy a sixty dollars thing this big that can do ten eighty p and upscales yeah. most of your games. So it's 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 definitely turned the tide. I showed him that, and he was like, "Well, I'm not doing all this crap with Xboxes." <laughs> like exactly. Yeah. And then when I plugged, like, dude, Linux is the demon operating system, man. I plugged in a PS3 controller, and it just goes, "What you want to do with it?" Yeah. You want what what's X? That's X. Done. What's square? That's square. Cool. It didn't <laughs> like it, it I, I'm astonished at the plug and play with just about the the Octoprint stuff, the Raspberry, you know, the the RetroPie stuff. It's it's the Terminator. It's T2. Well, you know, it only takes one person that wants to make their PS2 or PS3 controller work. To update an open source license <laughs> software. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, realistically, a room of four people like us that would know how to create a, a driver package for Linux. Yeah. Just each does one for each controller. And realistically, once you've done it with one controller, probably a lot alike for the other controllers. Yeah. And Windows has already had the software for years with all the Logitech stuff and all. I mean, every controller I've bought, you've been able to go through and change all your buttons based off of what emulator and stuff you were doing. It's just but I tested nice. it, though. I plugged it into my Windows computer and just goes, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, you need software, and then yeah, they, but you know they you downloaded that that image per se, yeah, and and they've already all done that, and that's that's one of the things I liked about Linux was your different distributions and okay, these guys are gonna do this, I don't have to worry about all these software packages because it's with this mix, you know, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna get I'm gonna build me one here, probably. New Year's time. I'm going to get me an emulator set up. Yeah, I, I've hit a stopping point on my purchasing for now. <laughs> <laughs> End of year budgets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, being in Austin, um, having already spent a ton of money on the F1 weekend, 
um, and then having nothing to do <laughs> during that one weekend and thinking of, th- thinking of things about quadricopters and thinking of things about like retro pies. Um, it was very. It was way too easy to go ma- to my Amazon wish list and go buy, 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 <laughs> buy, 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 buy. So all this stuff arrived, and then it needs it needs additional purchasing to help out. Yeah. So the quad, I have like a, a box full of loot that I'm sure arrived after I left at the house um, to modify that. I heard um, Kenneth had some trouble with his. Uh, yeah, he beefed it into a tree. Tree one. Yeah, the tree one. Man. Those hands trees. down the tree one. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I mean, it's funny, like, how I initially got into it was we were having a discussion about how to make it a little bit stronger. Yeah. Um, how to prevent things, like, maybe try to build cages for the props to yeah. keep those living. Because he sliced, like, down to the bone in his finger, or pretty pretty damn close. Um, he, he tried to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> Going 117 <laughs> miles per hour. No, no, he was set, I, I think he was setting it down, and he reached out to catch or something like that, and the... the or he cut him. power. I think it was actually. I think his son w- ran up, and he kind of panicked and reached out for it, so it wouldn't hit the kid or whatever. Okay. But yeah, it sliced into his finger, and like it cut him pretty good. Um, he's had many accidents with RC vehicles hitting him. Like <laughs> he, uh, I think it may be a couple of toes that he doesn't have feeling in because he ran an RC car into his his shin. <laughs> <laughs> My son used to have this wonderful helicopter that, that came with a dome around it. Yeah, and you could just yeah. pop that thing into anything. Oh, I remember those. Yeah. Like a hamster ball helicopter? Mm-hmm. That'd be pretty awesome. It reminded me of the helicopters on MASH. <laughs> <laughs> Something that might work. But yeah, the the whole thing started, or the, my my interest in it started with trying to, to design a, a more robust design that could protect the innards. Trying to create the bionic man. Uh, kind of, but I was like, oh, well, you can see the frames because, I mean, it, all the frames were designed, they've been around for a while, and they were all designed to be milled out of, out of carbon fiber from a CNC machine. Yeah. They weren't designed around the idea that you could have a 3D printer that just spits this out. So yeah. it's all designed around this flat plate and having to deal with those confines. With a 3D printer, you can make whatever shape you want. Yeah. Um, like I'm making uh, entire front ends, uh, front end housings for the FPV cameras. Uh, right now, after after I built mine, you can kind of see some of the areas that you can consolidate some of the uh, um, some of the hardware mounting to. So I'm actually I initially took it from a what was it? I think it was like 48 millimeters total height, and I mean it's it's built to be a racing quad. So you got to make sharp turns. It has to be a little little nimbly bimbly. Yeah. Um, but if you have this gigantic mass on the top, which is where you normally put your battery on, and you you tilt that forward if you want to change directions you now have this gigantic weight that's very far from this from the roll center of the vehicle (laughs) so when you go to turn it you have to move that mass um if you if you tighten that up and move it closer to the roll center of the vehicle it it turns much faster yeah it can roll over much faster so the bill that i brought over i had dropped that overall height to i think 35 millimeters a significant decrease yeah it's a pretty big de- pretty big decrease and so as i'm looking at it more and more i'm like oh if i can just take out this middle deck if i can just chip out this space in here and recess the camera the fpv camera further down into that bottom plate i, c- I think right now the the version i'm working on over the past couple of days i think i've decreased the overall height of the vehicle down to 28 millimeters oh wow so that's pr- that's pretty big. Yeah, that's that's what forty percent decrease. Yeah, I mean it's it's significant. So on these races, can you uh, be sort of a demolition derby? I mean, if you put, <laughs> if you put those, it's funny um, those cages around battle those props, drones, you can run into anyone. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, it was a recent convention um, where a couple of I, th- I can't remember what the podcast was, but they were talking about how di- they had a quad demolition derby. And it was just a big room filled with like thirty or forty quads, and they were talking about how actually how difficult damn near impossible it was to have two of them run into each other <laughs> like <laughs> they spent hours trying to make it happen and just couldn't at least in a satisfying way hmm. like you you may get like a prop a couple of props glance off of each other but like that that really satisfying earth shattering kaboom of carbon fiber and, and 3d pr- printed abs just smashing head first into each other it's surprisingly difficult you can see how much hard drive space they wasted recording that all in slow-mo yeah, they had all the <laughs> angles for all the cameras just waiting for it to happen just in case to get that one shot. It's like, <laughs> it doesn't happen. We, we used 732 terabytes of data today to bring <laughs> you this 12-second video. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I, 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 there's, it's really kind of open right now, the rules for these kind of things, and I don't really care about rules. 
Um, so I'm just sort of like, this is my first <laughs> foray into this whole thing. So uh, I'm going by the designs. It says the props have to be this far apart, and anything that happens within that, given around the a battery putting out this much power, motors that can put out this much power, so on and so forth, um, I'm doing whatever I can in that in the confines of that frame. So it's uh it's taking my attention away from everything else. This sounds a lot more uh, involved than the Pinewood Derby I did and, and, and the Cub Scouts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I posted. Uh, <laughs> I believe yours was still a brick with wheels. <laughs> one, one of them was um, on the outside. Well, this is going back. I mean, we we talk about our our differing interest in in different nerdy things. Um, this is very much going back to uh, my high school days. Um, so yeah, I'm going to nerd out on you. Um, Three-year officer for the Technology Student Association. Um, I have a whole gang of Best in State awards for stuff just like this. So My high school had typing. Yeah. <laughs> so the idea that I could go, uh, the idea that I could do something in this realm, and uh, I have a 3D printer, I can do whatever I want with it. Um, I can spit on any object with it. Actually, um, I, I think, was it the last podcast I showed the the yeah. the prop I made for mm-hmm. the Halloween costume? Um, but yeah, this, real quick, this is... Uh, oh, we have video now. Yeah, we can, and, and I promise not well, to send a copyright notice. Those on notice. YouTube do. <laughs> yeah, I promise not to send a copyright oh, notice about that. this. And then we could sue you. Yeah, yeah, let's get, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An inter-party dispute. Yeah. If we can make the judge do that, would be legit. That would be awesome. Like. Really, really, guys, th- <laughs> you're gonna waste all of our time. It's like you waste our time every day, woman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can we settle for a penny afterwards? <laughs> yeah. So this guy I've dubbed the uh, the R250 Minotaur. It um, makes me want to build a spider. Yeah, yeah, like like like, like Wild, 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 Wild West. West. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like just looking at it and the way you know, it's like, hmm, that could be fun. <laughs> we should have like spider wars. Yeah, yeah. I always want to go watch it, but then I don't. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's you not don't. Worth it, no. It's funnier if you watch it after you listen to an evening with Kevin Smith, where he talks about it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I used to own it on a VHS because someone bought it for me for my birthday before he watched it. I think. Oh, was it was it duct taped closed? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> All I know is like we watched it, and then you were just like, "Sorry, <laughs> sorry." <laughs> Should have known better. Didn't didn't have Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, Back yeah. then you actually had to watch movies to know if they were good or not. Yeah, I know. And how how big the poster was in the video store window was how good it was supposed to be. Oh, not even man. Kevin like, Costner I, was everywhere. Dude, I miss those days of just going <laughs> of walking in and picking some random thing off the shelf. Yeah. Uh, video Max. Yeah. Yeah. Gulfgate Video, Hopper Road, my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> we had one attached to our grocery store. Um, and then we had one video max that was the standalone one on the way to the grocery store. On the way, yeah. So if we didn't find it at one place, we'd stop at the other. And it was always weird watching these these people walk from behind the curtain in the back of the yeah. <laughs> from the back of the store from the adult section. And and oh, regardless, yeah. when they walked in, there were fourteen kids in the non adult section. And did they you do just, the same thing that my cousin and I did, where you just stand there, wait for them to come out, <laughs> just watch the. Yeah, just watch <laughs> yeah. watch the plastic partition. I always just like to giggle. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> cuz they would turn red and then when you saw them in church on Sunday it was even worse. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but see nowadays you don't have to do that. You just open up Plex or Netflix or Hulu or Whatever, yeah. and you just, I want to watch that. I, th- I think you find more porn accidentally now than anyone ever intentionally <laughs> tried to find <laughs> 15 years ago, 20 years ago, somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it <laughs> oh, it's on my car sometimes around work. <laughs> the only thing I remember, for some I remember walking, I remember, I remember walking into that room when I was a kid. I can't remember. The adult room? Yeah, the adult room. Oh, what were you stumbling. doing? It was more like... <laughs> Hey, there's another room back here with movies, and they have bigger boxes. They have to be better. <laughs> <laughs> so you just it sort is of great because you could, you could walk up to and, and and see the title of a movie that was near and dear to your heart, mm-hmm. and it just be punned away with some <laughs> nastiness. <laughs> mommy, mommy, and not only s- that, not only that, it was the twelfth sequel to it. <laughs> exactly, you know. <laughs> The Harry, number of times. Harry Twatter 9. <laughs> yeah. 
but the uh but yeah the the depths that they would go to like i don't know we, there's like a, a blockbuster movie terminator 2 i think we can squeeze like 15 20 porn productions out of this right <laughs> yeah i miss video stores but i really don't miss video stores i always the ones that have popcorn i like those yeah yeah, they give you something to do while you're waiting on your parents to decide between a crappy movie and a the biggest thing. Movie. The biggest thing for uh, to for Gulfgate Video, man. I don't even know if uh, probably doesn't even exist anymore. Represent. <laughs> uh, the coolest thing was the guy that worked there was cool as shit. So anytime that I would rent a video game that was Nintendo Hard, which was every one of them, and you didn't know, like I just couldn't even. We would go back down to the store and he would tell me how to play it because that's what he did all day. That's all game. he did all day yeah. was play video games. My my favorite was them charging you like a dollar fifty to put it into the rewind machine. Yeah, it's yeah. like how is that worth a dollar fifty? You have nine of them. <laughs> Do you only ever use those two? I don't think those have ever been used. No, they, they don't work. They're just there for looks. Like, yeah. Why is that a dollar? Why is that dollar fifty? Who doesn't have the the time, the two minutes to press the rewind and like yeah, go take a piss? Assholes. That's who doesn't <laughs> have the time. It was basically an asshole tax. Well, I yeah. mean, it, it it Neil had a friend. That it took him a very long time to try to rewind a DVD. Yeah, we got done that watching a movie, and it was actually a Divix. Oh, it's because Divix. I thought Divix was the future, and you know what? I was actually right <laughs> because Divix <laughs> equals AVI, <laughs> and it's one of the most popular video formats in the world. I'm just yeah. saying, it just the machine was a horrible failure. But luckily, mine played both. But um, are you talking about the thirty-five dollar like Walmart special? Oh no, this was like when 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 the war was happening between DVD and Divix. You, you paid uh, I went to Circuit and City and bought like a two hundred and eighty dollar one that would play both. But it was a Divix player that could play DVDs. Okay. Um, but yeah, that was that was fun. But um, I just I remember though, what was it? The Apex. Yeah. Oh yeah, Apex. those those I've had a ton of those. Back in like yeah. two thousand two, two thousand three. They'd play any any format. Everybody yeah. had one of those. I'd play yeah. Well in the yeah. Divix you had those those DVDs that uh would only work for so long. Yeah. And it was that was the annoying. Divix were like that, yeah. Because they're sitting there on the shelf and like, ooh, I haven't seen that forever. Son of a bitch. Yeah, the timer was <laughs> off on them. Which I mean would have been great for the rental industry, but the story yeah, they, you that's you what you they were using it for. Yeah. Was uh our friend didn't didn't know wouldn't hip to the new the new discs. And we had watched a movie. Of course, all the family's there. The movie ends, and we're like, "Hey, hey, Nick, rewind it. We gotta take it back." <laughs> and we watched him look for a rewind button on this Divix player. Well, no, he had it, but he kept just like restarting the menu. Yeah, the like DVD he, menu. he kept pressing back, and it would go to the FBI warning, and then start into it. And he just it. And we're like, dude, yeah. it's, it's a disc. <laughs> it's, it's you don't you don't rewind a record. <laughs> And this is essentially just a record with a laser instead of a needle. But that's after like 15 minutes, and, and this is my you know oldest brother's like friend. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, because this was when I think in your first apartment, the Farrington. Yeah. So I was like, what, 14? How old were you I in think, 2000? I think 14, something like that. So I'm just Math. sitting here like. You were born in 86, so it was September. Yeah, we'll go with 14. Yeah, it, it was it was the most amazing thing because I'm just like he's he's like five six years older than me and he can't figure it out that like come on that was great I love that story <laughs> Nyquil's hitting me I almost fell asleep yeah. twice during your well, that's like kids now <laughs> that are three and know to walk in the living room oh, and yeah. say Xbox on Netflix Blues Clues <laughs> Blues Clues Blows close. <laughs> but no, that's fun. Because I had the connect when my uncle came over. And I also have the remote for my uh, for my fireplace. Yeah. So I'm sitting there and I had the remote in my hand. And it was, you know, it was December. And I was like, fireplace on. And I turn it on. The next morning I come down. He's all pissed off. I was like, what? He goes, I've been yelling at your fireplace for 15 minutes. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. Well, it's yeah. easy to sell when you can say Xbox on and it turns on. He's like, yeah. oh, you just have everything voice activated. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been toying with the idea of, like of it's demolition man. <laughs> I've got Windows 10 on both computers at the office. I've been toying with the idea of turning on Cortana <laughs> just to yell at my computer and just see yeah. how it goes. I've heard um, she takes it well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's nice regardless. I have Windows 10 on the machine we're using for production right now, and we should. I don't know. It would be interesting to try to have like a Cortana versus sexy robot voice face off. Oh, like yeah. John Travolta oh. Nick Cage style. Ooh. See who wins. No one wins. No one wins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Face Off was such a horrible movie. <sighs> yeah, I've seen it horrible more than movie. once. Did you see the John Travolta Scientology movie? 
I that down was the John Travolta one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No. It was like Earth uh, A.E. something. Oh, okay. I have yeah. Battlefield Earth. Battlefield Earth. Dread Dread Earth. Yes. Yeah. That Dread, is the Dread most Lock amazing Travolta. movie yeah. ever. Yeah. It is so bad. It's good. Oh, I love that movie. There, there's. <laughs> It's it, we're actually getting into like an interesting thing with movies right now because there's a lot of good actors that are ending up in bad movies, um, just to find work. Because um, yeah. right now it's superheroes and your big touchy feely mm-hmm. award season movies, yeah. and that's it. If you yep. if you find anything that's not that, it's coming out straight to Netflix. Well, you know, there's there's minor exceptions, but it's it's primarily the actors that are driving that. Um, like the the movie we were talking about with. Benedict Cumberbatch or whatever. Oh, the uh, Doctor Strange. Yeah, well, no, not that movie in particular, but the last movie he was in um, wasn't. What was the last movie he was in? Uh, wasn't <laughs> it the one with the he deciphered the code or whatever? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually the, uh, almost wanted to see that. That was an awesome I like movie. That, I like that assessment. I almost wanted to that, see that. That was probably because you know the <laughs> all the movies were released for the the yeah. award season. They all become available online. I watched pretty much all the movies that were submitted, and of the movies I watched, that was my favorite. The Imitation Game, yeah, yes. looked, yeah. Like you talked you, you talked about that one quite a bit. That one was, and you know, that was one of the the few movies that didn't fit the mold yeah. of what was coming out. Yeah, actually. And uh, then there was one you you watched that I didn't that you were pretty big on about that. I thought time. Birdman was the best. That's the Birdman one. Birdman was good. Yeah. Uh, the new Sherlock uh, Holmes. Uh, that like, counts as a superhero movie, though. No, not yeah. the way they do it. Ian McKellen. Cause it's oh it, yeah, not that one. Yeah, like not not like old man Holmes. Yeah, that's because it, it's it's going into basically the end of his life. I mean, he doesn't die in it. If spoiler alert, but Aww. it's it's the end of his <laughs> life. He's starting to lose his memories. Yeah, he's trying to remember his last case before he retired, and it's him dealing with his life, trying to remember. I think that one fits into the category he was talking about with the all lovey or not the lovey dovey but the all feeling sad yeah. emotion thing but you can't pick a better actor and a mm-hmm. better story for that like Ian McKellen as as isn't they called like Mr. Holmes or something yeah or Mr. Yeah. Holmes I think that's going to be an interesting movie it was it mm. was very good oh, but uh, you've already seen it I have not yes, <laughs> yes they're uh, I liked it quite a bit they're promoting this new movie pretty hard uh joy with um Hunger Games Oh, where she's with what's her, what's his name again? Yeah, that the it's those movie dudes again. Joy. It's with Hunger Games. That's what <laughs> yeah. you just gave us there. I'm really glad you're here <laughs> because that that's where the podcast would have ended. Me and Chad would have just looked at each other. We probably both would have been too lazy to look it up and be like, "That's a wrap, folks." <laughs> yeah. See you next week. <laughs> on, on that note, on that note, the 35 people that will listen to this will have homework. But yeah, Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence and Bradley Cooper together again. All right. They, sh- um, they should just get married. It's a, it's another they play husband and wife and everything. Yeah, it's another David O. Russell flick. Um, that's like be happy with what you got and do blah 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 snow scene <laughs> dancing. Yeah. Um, basically that that whole thing over again. Um, but yeah, it's those. It's that's the another that's the other reach for the Academy Award for this year. Um, because pretty much everything that that. The, the that dude does and those two people are in will be nominated. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm much more into TV than I am movies these days. When I was younger, there was much like less TV to watch. Of course, you know, even with cable, until you had to go like digital, you only had 99 channels. Yeah, <laughs> but you know nowadays, I mean Netflix is putting out some good TV series. Mm-hmm. We know you know. Daredevil I think there really is, is something to be said for that short format. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. 24 episodes, 26 episodes. It, you're taking too long to tell a damn story. If you get to it with a good budget. Um, plus with like something that's like ten to twelve episodes or fourteen, you're going to lock in better actors. Um, you're likely going to have a better or more of your budget to spend on a better look field of the film. You can pay more attention to details. Um, it also forces you forces the writers to get to telling the damn story. Yeah. Um, I really think with if you go back to like look at something like um, uh, uh, Joss Whedon and Dollhouse, you got twenty four episodes to fill up. Um, you got to stretch it out because you know there's only so much you can create, and there's only certain stories that are built to do that. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, example being Stargate, obviously. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You walk through that gate, you're in a different world, different storyline, different yeah. everything. Yeah, it was built you to did be have episodic. a season arc that you were going through, but you had filler episodes. But it kind of worked because, like with Supernatural as well, you have like Monster of the Week. You know, it was originally yeah. built as a horror show where every week was just a different monster that they had to track down and kill, learn the lore about and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, as the seasons went on, 
They there's should probably get back to that. that. I really think so too. I think a lot of shows. There, I'm there's two turned sides. off by that. I'm turned off by that serialized. You know, this is the episode of the week kind of thing, and there's not really any continuity. Or you have, you know, it, it really is the flavor of the week, and it's whatever we're going to fill in. Um, I mean, it really depends on the show. Yeah. I think I think sci-fi and horror are probably the two genres. I mean, Battle Battlestar was in the 20s for their seasons, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like the one of the best sci-fi it's, it's dramas ever. Between, <laughs> it's like the difference between um, the Next Generation and, and Deep and Space Deep, Nine. Yeah, exactly. Because Deep Space Nine eventually abandoned that format and went for and a that, lo- heavy continuity. And that's where it got good. I agree. Yeah. Uh, but that's where it got damn good. <laughs> but with Supernatural, and it was getting good in some of the Supernatural, but then it kind of got off the rails. Yeah. And, yeah. and you, they you, they went with the primary season story arc. Too heavily, mm-hmm. they 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 started too many things to where okay now episodes twelve through through four twenty four have to be progressing this big storyline apart. And one of the problems I think they've had was they've had to shove what could have ended up being a two season story, like you know they had Yellow Eyes for I think three seasons, mm-hmm. um, into one season because of contracts. Like we want to be able to give our fans that have been following us for you know starting at seven eight nine years, they're you know they're on season ten now or eleven. We want to give them an ending. Really, what it supernatural? Is yeah. Ten, wow. Eleven. Yep. That's, eleven. A, that's, eleven. A, that's a hell of a run eleven. for. That's yeah. a hell of a run for a TV show for live action. And they've fallen into some traps. Uh, some they're doing the same things over and over again. Yeah. So and we have different groups. This is like the really the third or fourth. Group. And they didn't just automatically go to time travel. No. It's like no. Hell, not yet. Flash got to the end of season one and were like time travel. There has been time travel. <laughs> oh, wait, um, I apologize. I didn't even. I should have thought through. There has been. time there travel. There has been time travel, but it was kind of oh. cool because Dean got to go back and solve a case with Elliot Ness. So, <laughs> there's been a couple time travels because yeah, they worked with his father. Yeah, they went uh-huh. there. I mean, and there's there's a lot of people who come back from the dead. It's, it's like a superhero. Like you can't kill them. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, like you can for a little bit. Someone will bring them back at some point. You can go up to heaven and talk to them. And yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of cool like that. But yeah, I mean, I definitely see. A lot of the shows these days, their filler episodes are just, just they're doing it to fill it, fill the time. Yeah. Whereas, well, you know, my be point being on those, you never knew when, when season, where were we, where we going to get a season seven? Where were we going to get a season eight? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to try just to approved, put a pretty... Uh, they just approved um, uh, American Horror Story season for season six. six, which means they have to have a season seven because you know season You've six is going to suck. you got to go on a good note. <laughs> yeah. you got to go out on a good note, so... I was actually kind of it was kind of cool because uh, on the the last uh, Nerdist podcast I listened to, like I said, they were talking to Bill, and, yeah. and that whole storyline came up from a big article on Reddit, and none of them tied it together as being the. It's kind of funny because he mentions one of his friends from True Blood was a character on the latest American Horror Story. Yeah, while they're talking about H H whatever his name was mm-hmm. that built the the hotel that the show is based off of, and none of them put A and B together. But <laughs> it's um I think that comes on tomorrow. But that's been you you got to start that one. It's been fun. I've, I've watched been. the first episode um, for this season. I haven't. I've lost track of it. Um, freaking CAD man, <laughs> dude. I get home. I I design at work because a lot of stuff is just automated in the background. Like yeah, click go. Okay, good. Um, back to designing. Yeah. And then I I upload it to Google Drive. Rush home. Um, chow down really quick and then just keep designing, keep designing, keep designing. I mean, the the revision process, I've gone through like 20 different quads <laughs> in the design process. I've built one. Yeah. And it's just the constant revision, constant revision because I, I'll get home, keep designing, and I, I look up and it's like, it's 11 damn 30. Like, the, the whole thing about watching TV, the whole thing about like, pick, dude, for me to go more than two days without picking up a guitar and I'm I'm at home, I'm not away somewhere else where there's no guitar, that's significant. <laughs> that's a big deal. It's like me not playing Civ. Yeah. <laughs> or not watching basketball. But yeah, like, the number of pursuits that I have, <sighs> if, I could, if I could sell a hobby and get good money for it, like my interest, my controlling interest in the hobby altogether, <laughs> if I could sell it as like a licensed property, that, that might be the answer for me. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I've, there's been a lot of TV shows that I watch on a normal basis, or n- usually in the fall, um, that I just haven't paid attention to. And it's going to be one of those binge weekends. The it, just to it's catch up been on like it. that for a lot of people. I think a lot of it is the culture of people binge watching, waiting for six episodes, and then oh, I've got a Saturday. Let me watch. You know, catch yeah. up on it, kind of thing. Yeah. The way the Netflix is, is releasing their stuff is that way. You know, they just did. Uh, I think uh, it's I did that with too many. So I have right. like. I'd sit down on Saturday and half the days and we figuring out which one do I want to catch up on. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, friends that are very, very into, into Supernatural, we have our own little chat room at work. And, yeah. you know, they're like, I haven't been in that chat room. I, f- I haven't even started the season yet. We're on episode six already. Most of the shows are. But it, it seems like it's also just everyone's busy doing other things right now. I think and because of that, I think because of that, be- because of the shift in the way a lot of the the really good shows are delivered, the shift in the way people are sort of living around TV now, um, the idea that you can watch an entire season in one sit, yeah. um, I think it's really going to force networks' hands to really crunch down on the number of episodes they create and to try to generate a better interest. Like we were talking about before the show, um, we're in the third episode of Supergirl, and the numbers on that show have decreased dramatically. Yeah. Um, I think the same thing with like Blind Spot gets talked about a lot, but it's by a bunch of old people that don't do anything but watch network TV. Like, yeah. the young crowds aren't interested in it at all. Well, you know, when we were kids, you know, going way back with, like, you know, the sitcoms. Blind Spot would be Mantis. It would be <laughs> Team Knight Rider. It yeah. would be any one of those shows that you watch because you only have five channels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, we, we had, you had a night. Like, you know, it was probably one of the ones that you remember the most, but you had TGIF, the, you know, the Friday mm-hmm. shows that came yeah. on from 7 to 9 mm-hmm. or 6 to 8 or whatever. And and your your family, your weekend was built around that two hour block of TV that your shows came on. You had that two yeah, hours. That was like the only TV you watched in the week. Yeah, I mean, you may have had another show. You know, your Saturdays, you obviously had your Twenty One Jump Streets and your Night Riders and all that kind of stuff. You could watch in the mornings because yeah. <laughs> why not? But you know, like nowadays, it's I think it's getting to the point where people, I'll watch it when I have a chance. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I'll let them stack up on a DVR. We didn't have that. You had to either be there. To press record on your VCR, <laughs> well, you had a timer on it. Yeah, some did, um, but not not the poor people's. Well, even Dude, after, even I after was we poor. got, well, <laughs> my parents were teachers, so <laughs> teachers poor. But right. Yeah. Well, even I after mean, we got DVRs, though, it's like we would we'd start at twenty minutes after. Oh like, yeah, like least. Sci-Fi Fridays. Yeah. For five years after DVRs came out, we had plenty of them. We would just start 20 minutes before. Oh, it was usually one hour. After. You had to do it one hour if you wanted to go through three shows with no commercials. Well, no, we would yeah. do we'd do 20 minutes because you would stop and smoke in between each show. Well, usually we go have Chinese food so, and then come back. Yeah, but I mean, we, we, <laughs> we had a plan, but yeah. we still wanted to watch it the, like that night that it came out. Mm-hmm. Now it's like there's nothing that I actually have to watch that night. No, and I think it's Game revealing. of Thrones is that way for me. Okay, Game of Thrones. Um, yeah, Game of Thrones. It's not currently I'll jump on that. On, and I'll so. say the only reason I put Walking Dead in there because you guys have heard me moan and complain yeah. um, is because of of everyone else's watch. If if I watched Empire, I'd have to watch it night of simply because it's the number one show on TV, and you can't get in the elevator without someone talking about it. Hearing someone else's conversation. Those are the only shows I care about. I mean, Rockets game, I'm not going a whole day not knowing who won. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I can do that. I mean, yeah, see, not, not so much for me. But, yeah, I mean, it's kind of I mean, almost been a theme. You have to name this episode based off of our all of our content. All, everything we've talked about has kind of been along that same theme in just different mediums. But podcasting, you know, the culture now with, you know. Oh, what, what do you mean, like the episode titles I put on these? Yeah, you got to give it a good inception yeah. type name <laughs> i was gonna say uh I, I had i had initially thought about um uh, naming the name of the title of the episode uh this title but removed for, for copyright claim or something <laughs> like that. but yeah yeah it's it's been it's been a, it, this has been a great conversation though it's been um, a long one I just it's been a long one yeah how, we'll, we'll how cut long. it off but um <laughs> yeah so nyquil kicked in like 30 minutes ago <laughs> i'm actually surprised you're awake <laughs> and i figured at this point you'd have like 20 open tabs of things you wanted to talk like about <laughs> so yeah, like you, we've had you on two weeks in a row and you haven't you haven't really the, the conversation's gone on tv I've, everything i'm opening is movies <laughs> uh, well what do you got with movies man okay first off we've got uh nicole kidman is rumored to be signing for wonder woman i heard about that <laughs> Not as Wonder Woman, but I on the know, show. I know. Probably her mom. But I think her ship sailed on being relevant or being, you know, a decent actress. I don't know. I, I like where they're going with Aunt May. Yeah. Well, I mean, like Marissa Tomei, though, but she's like, she's Wait, capable of acting. <laughs> they're doing Marissa Tomei is Aunt May? Yes. Yeah. I, you didn't know this? I did not. You I should listen not. to this podcast. I know, right? <laughs> Holy crap. That's 
bizarre. I don't know yeah. if we were giving more mic time. He didn't even listen. I think she's got like <laughs> remember when when they had when they brought Sally Field in. For that the was first. Sally Field. I liked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to have some. You have to have some levity. You have to have a, you know a little bit of a lighthearted feel, but have an actress that can carry the more heavy moments. Yeah. Oh. The GoPro died a long time ago, which is why I'm glad we're not doing that. That was the backup, but we're done with the GoPro. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, I don't see flashing in my peripherals anymore. <laughs> yeah, it died. I, d- I didn't start charging it till I f- got home and found out we were doing this tonight because I forgot. Oh, um, yeah. I was kind of wondering why our hangout was this going to happen today. I was like, um, I don't, I don't, I, di- I didn't think I, we got like a positive confirmation on that. So it oh, was we did more, Friday. Okay, I didn't pay attention. Okay. Anyway, um, what do you so, <laughs> have? Y'all heard of the Ghost in the Shell movie? That's oh, like yes. yes. Yeah. Looking yeah. forward to that. That okay. one is is on my list. I, I that was one of my first. Um, anime is the Ruini Kenshin series, uh, mm-hmm. which we talked about in the past. Yeah, and that was really kind of the the things that I watched the most anime back in the day. Yeah, with and, uh, Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, would be interesting. Mm-hmm. In yeah, I like that. Yeah, there was an interesting article about um, the uh, the wage gap between yeah. actresses and and actors, and um, the fact that um, Scar- Scarlett Johansson was still paid more than I think Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth. Mm-hmm. And another, I think, a Ruffalo. Yeah, she, she was number two behind, yeah, behind uh, Iron Man. Yeah, Iron Junior. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it she, depends on the actor or actress. It depends on. Yeah, the, it, you know, I'd like to see Tim Burton put her in a suit. That <laughs> could be <laughs> Johansson. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, essentially, she's wearing the Catwoman suit. Oh, I got mixed up. Uh, for some reason, in my head, I was like, Scarlett Johansson is Edward Scissorhands. I don't think it's no, not that one. <laughs> but you know, just his costume design, just a really tight leather type <laughs> outfit. What well, you know, what her outfit is? Yeah. In the Avengers, or pretty much just what every seventy five percent of of the female characters end up in that. So yeah, it's not Very really true. uh, <laughs> it, it popped up in Jane, or it popped up in. The last Mission Impossible, it popped up. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. What was that last link? You the were Avengers M appeal thing. It's it's this very common. This is uh, the Baywatch movie that's coming out. Oh, Dwayne the, Johnson, the, Zac Efron, and they're casting the female. Is Hasselhoff in it? Uh, the, I'm sure he will. Dude, have... Hasselhoff's been pulling the strings with Baywatch since like the well, he it was his show. Yeah, it yeah. The he's in those Dodge commercials and his Baywatch shorts running around. Dude, I'm not. I'm not. There was. <sighs> Freaking Torrance, man. <laughs> Free <Freely's> Torrance. <laughs> Something about the nostalgia of it made me download the entire show run of Baywatch. Really? I don't know why. And and as soon as I started watching the first episode, I was like, I regret this. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, yeah, no. See, I remember the few times that it was on, it didn't have sound. What's great is is um, <laughs> what I did, I made a similar mistake with Knight Rider. It's one of those that's difficult to watch. Don't do it. But I did download it, and I figured out I can just turn it on on my computer and turn my monitors off and go to bed, and I remember it better than it is watching it. (laughs) (laughs) There's so many shows that are like that, though, like Airwolf. Remember Airwolf? Oh, yeah. Um, You go back and watch them now, you're like, oh, oh, stop. Thunder in Paradise? Yeah. I thought that was going to be timeless. (laughs) <laughs> See, I, I can't go back and watch that. I want to because I have such good memories. That was awesome. But yeah. now, so many, uh, so many horrible, great shows <laughs> that all revolved around some vehicle that did something spectacular that no one else had seen before. That somehow was in a privateer's hands, right? Uh, yeah, like I think we, I think we talked about this with Iron Man. Like, there's no mm-hmm. way the government wouldn't have arrested him already. Oh yeah, yeah. they you can't let, have a privateer have better tech than the military. Did y'all ever see that uh, series where the semi trucks were also helicopters? No. Oh, okay, I'm gonna. Do you remember Mask? Yes. Toys. I yes. love when those. we were like 80s. Yeah. Yeah, like the Doom buggy that could transform into a jet. Yeah. Uh, the most inexplicable one was the helicopter that turned into a jet. <laughs> Like, oh, you just tuck the fins away. Yeah, yeah, like, you're already flying. You want to do some more better flying? Right. The Highwaymen. The highway. No, I don't remember that. Let me see if I can... Uh, Is it a Lionsgate production? Uh, I don't <laughs> think so, but... Cause, it yeah, lasted man. two seasons. Uh, you you remember the one that would be on our TV once a week for, like, the three years it was on? I think it was called Renegade, the biker? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Lorenzo <laughs> Lamas. <laughs> oh. Yes, the Renegade. <laughs> The one I can go back and rewatch right now, though, like if, if I see it on or if it's on Plex and I hit play and I'll actually watch all the through is MacGyver. 
yeah. I can still watch you that. Got, well, like, you guys have an obsession with uh, with Dude Face that plays Richard MacGyver. Dean yeah, Richard Dean Anderson. You guys have like a mild obsession with that guy. I liked him a lot on Stargate, and MacGyver was always fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aren't they doing a new MacGyver? Uh, we talked about oh, that. Yeah, we did talk about yeah, that. Yeah, we talked about that. Like, how impossible how? is it when everyone just has a, has a smartphone? Yeah, how, yeah. how they should do it. Yeah. Pretty much. It's it, yeah. He he'll have to like there. There will be so many plot holes filled with hacking. Yeah. Like crank up the Wi-Fi boost on the cell phone to melt <laughs> this lock <laughs> with radio waves. And I just wrote your first episode. Send me a check. I think download the MacGyver app. And yeah, you the just MacGyver scans app. the environment and, and solves it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know about it, unless you got something else. They want to wrap this one. I up, do man. have one last thing. Hit uh, it. JJ Abrams talking about. Uh, Star Trek Into Darkness and uh, the new Star Wars movie. Yeah. His quote is, I didn't want to enter into making a movie where we didn't really own our story. I feel like I've done that a couple times in my career. That's not to say I'm not proud of my work, but the fact is I remember starting to shoot Super 8 and Star Trek Into Darkness and feeling like I hadn't really solved some fundamental story problems. <laughs> um, like in Super <laughs> 8, the, uh, what was that kid's catchphrase that he said every five seconds? I don't remember. I liked like, the movie, but I don't remember the cat. Yeah, I liked it too, but that kid's repeating line annoyed the hell out of me. It was like, it's, it's choice, it's choice. It was something like that. <laughs> it was, you, you know, you find like the 12 year old that gets their catchphrase yeah. for like that year of school and doesn't stop saying it. I yeah. understand because I was one of those kids. But anyway, um, yeah, it, it just it kept coming up and it was somehow amplified even more. <laughs> In the course of the movie, and it's like, why does he keep saying this? They, they couldn't have written a different line. So, was there anything more to that? No, that's pretty much it. Uh, I've it? sent y'all a link if y'all want to see <laughs> the uh, the semi truck that turns into a helicopter. I um, recommend fast forwarding to two minutes and thirty seconds in. <laughs> I'm just gonna watch it on yours. Okay. All right. Well, I'm oh, gonna well. try. Uh, what's his name? Before L.A. Law, well, maybe around the time of L.A. Law. This what was, was your What was your time scope on that? Two, two minutes. Two thirty what? seconds. Two minutes thirty seconds. Two minutes thirty seconds. Are you gonna put it on the big screen. I'm gonna put it on the big screen, and I'm only gonna it's, show it's, like twenty seconds of it. Yeah, no, it, you only need to. Heaven forbid we get a takedown notice because the highwayman, whoever makes Transformers, is gonna sue us. Yeah, it's not an official, so someone <laughs> put this off their TV and put it up, so we should be safe. Nice. It's shot in one ten p. Oh, did um, you break it? No, it looks like the video... Oh, no! It just happened. It crashed. You crashed the video. I crashed the video. Wah, All right. Wah, wah. So uh, I can fall asleep. I wonder now. if that's going to be the whole video or not. I don't know. I doubt it. I'm really hoping that this ended up recording somewhere. Because <laughs> now I'm really nervous. That'd be now that the, the GoPro fi- failed. Yeah, the GoPro... <laughs> fa- Dude, the GoPro fell like 40 minutes ago, so yeah. we got nothing, man. Um, but I see a video file, but I don't know how to click off of this thing. So anyway, I guess we're going to wrap it up on that. Right. Yeah. That, <laughs> okay. That's what happens. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs> like, quick, cut to music. Cut to music. Everything's gone wrong. I won't wear an Equal. Yeah, I need the uh, I need the Simpsons technical difficulties. The bear eating the production host yes. thing. You probably yeah. get a DMC for the, uh, DMCA. Yeah, for I'll that. get a takedown notice for that. Anyway, good night, guys.